I think that is very rare content that I haven't uh, gotten the chance to go in depth about talking about late game map decisions. Banana slam giant. So I'll just read people real quick. It says you've been focusing, getting creeps in the lane and simplifying things down. And it has helped a lot with a lot, even in providing context for the more complex stuff like creep aggro. Okay. What were you like when you first got coached by me or like before the last session or, you know, that kind of thing? Give me an idea. Yeah, the first time I got coached by you, I was around 3.3. 3. And okay. then it was like a four or five month period in between that. I climbed to 3.7 on my main. Gotcha. The last time I was like, that's where I was at was 3.7. And so, okay. I, so yeah. do you feel like you've improved or do you feel like the coaching hasn't really helped at all? It's fine um, to say it hasn't. So what I would say is like, I feel like I have improved, but my, I, I guess we kind of expected it, right? Because I was like only focusing on CS and lane. So I would like die to random harass or like, it took me a while to actually, I, I'm still like there. I don't think I've like fully mastered it yet. Um, but I think I just need more like time to. to so I, rem I remember usually with a bit of context, I remember exactly what I talked to people about. So your <laughs> issue was that you only focused on CSing? Uh, it was that I was like too distracted in lane. Like I would, like there'd be there'd be other support, things like, going on that you weren't CSing, right? That's you, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. I, I, yeah, I remember that. Okay, I was a bit confused with your wording. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, to give everyone else a context, it felt like he was just kind of neglecting the fundamentals of playing carry in favor of like trying to do other things. Yeah. And I I think it's really important for all of you to build your fundamentals first rather than try to build upon them if you can't do the fundamentals when you're building upon them uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. basically so that's what you were doing wrong so um yeah. do you have a few replays in mind um, i do yeah most of the time as a carry it's inefficient to interact with that guy but if you're like troll against some right clicking offlaner it's like usually you can efficiently interact with that guy you know you can right. actually harass them while you're hitting creeps which, if yeah. that's the case, obviously you want to prolong the interaction between you and them. Um, but okay, you start bottom. Okay. okay. Uh, bad TP yeah, there. Bit, uh, <laughs> yeah. Happens. So I don't think your lane management is good at all here. Um, the lane's pushing into you. Like, right now, you need to hit that, like, twice. This one right here. Yeah, yeah. And, like, right now, you need to be hitting these creeps forward. Like, hit, 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 hit. You don't want five creeps running into your tower, my friend. Right, yeah. It's just that simple, right? Uh, what's the number one deterrent for a level one or, like, early hero like Monkey King or Ursa to hit people? It is just so many enemy creeps that you take more damage hitting them than yeah. they take from you hitting them. So, uh, right. that's the biggest thing. It, not only is it important to make sure the lane doesn't push unnecessarily... You don't want so many creeps coming against you that uh, you can't hit them. Right. So the way I look at this is that more so rather than thinking about everything in the convoluted way I just said, I'll ask you. <laughs> does a stable lane, meaning one that just sits right here, and there's four creeps on four creeps... Right. Then there's three creeps on three creeps, then two on two, then one on one, then there's a new set of creeps that just meet right here. Who does that favor? Uh, Monkey King, for sure. Okay. Well, yeah. in, general, in general, why does it favor you? Um, Because if I want to be aggressive, I can, and if I have to play safe based on who the offlaner is, I also can do that. Like, I'm right under my tower. So, so. in general, it'll almost always favor the carry, but yeah. also... It'll also favor the guy that's winning the lane, or the more the guy that's powerful in lane. Yeah. If you're against Razor last game, what are you doing with the creeps and stuff? I'm just trying to get them away from Razor. You are doing all you can to fuck up these random creeps and you know drag them away and do all kind of fancy shit. Okay. Yeah. So I need you to realize that if you're Slark against Razor, do you need to feel compelled to do what I just told you, where you need to prevent the creeps from going into your tower? Not really, because no. I prefer farming under tower. Because you're not in control yeah. of the lane, okay? Like, yeah. you can do things where you try to prevent too many creeps from coming into your tower. You know, you can, like, mm -hmm. hit them a little bit and stuff. But the last thing I want you to do is take, like, you know, 200 damage from Razor because you tried to do that. 
Right. So my emphasis is you need to preserve lane equilibrium one way or the other when you are the guy that's in control. Mm-hmm. That's all yeah. there is to it. And uh, so rather than thinking about all those random factors that could potentially add up to other things, it's like if you're monkey king against Brew, every micro movement you make needs to be to get the creeps right next to your tower. So like right here, what I would have done. Okay. So it's all about the big picture, my friend. Okay. So right here, by you walking back up here, you're effectively trying to deny like one or two creeps, right? Yeah. That's yeah. what you're doing. How do you feel about the lane right here? It's not ideal to be here. So let's rewind. What could you do? Um, I could just pull this creep back to the like my creeps that are coming, so they stop. Um, and then... how crazy is that? Yeah. Why is that so hard? Isn't that <laughs> all you I... want? Is the lane to be right fucking here? Right. Yeah. So what you need to understand is no small movement in terms of you hitting the guy or whatever is more important than just getting the lane where you want it, guys. So yeah. if the first step is understanding where you want it. I feel like as Monkey King, it ain't that fucking hard. You want the lane right, right here. The guy's going to walk up. You hit him. You be aggressive. If they try to go on you, you have a tower right there. Like, knowing where you want it is not hard. Now, I need to see every little fucking move, every breath in your body to get the <laughs> lane right here. Get it right here. And then do some random shenanigans. I don't need to see this where you're, like, trying to fuck with the brew on these CS. Like, I don't care right. about these creeps. I care about the lane getting right here. And yeah. then I can do whatever the fuck I want. Because the lane's right there. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Okay, because now the lane's here. And you're like, okay, I'm going to keep trying to drag it back. I'm going to drag it back again. I don't really feel like I want to be aggressive here. Look how passive I have to play. I have to keep dragging the lane back. Like, you know, we're still forward here. I haven't hit an enemy hero in the last two creep waves because it's been forward. Okay, the lane's kind of okay. Okay, we're gonna keep dragging it back. Could have just dragged it back literally three creep waves ago. Like, your cure was gonna go on. Okay. Like, you see what I'm saying? Where, like, yeah, yeah. you're actually passive for the next three creep waves, and it's not because you're bad in terms of, like, where the creeps are at. I think if the creeps are out here, you shouldn't be aggressive. But, yeah. You're letting the creeps be there. <laughs> so that's <laughs> yeah. when I know you guys are being bad. It's like, I know it's bad because there was something in your control that could pull the lane where you want it to be. So right. yeah. um, that's a big deal. That's a big one. Um, we'll keep fast forwarding here. That applies to every carry. It's just like exactly where you want it is kind of, mm -hmm. you know, different based on matchups and stuff. Okay. Same thing here. I'd be hitting these creeps forward as much as I can. I can here. Yeah. I don't really want it going to my tower because then it starts pushing out again. Also, he dragged on Brew. What could you have done here? Um. I know. I know. At the time, I like was solely focused on the creeps, so I didn't even realize he was dragging until you know, like thirty seconds after. But so here, guess what? Can, uh, you know, the... guess what? Guess what? Creeps also matter to you. Uh, my own, my own. Yeah, case. man. So this is yeah. just needs to be added to your uh, priorities list. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a problem that you, if you're telling me you're so focused on these creeps that you're not thinking about, that's fine. But I now need yeah. you to expand your focus of creeps to not only, I, I will tell you that in the back of my mind, I check to see where my creep wave is every creep wave. Okay. Like it's, it's an automatic yeah. trigger for me that when I meet a new creep wave like this, Mm -hmm. I checked it's it's kind of like um so when I when I used to live uh, like when I was living in Arizona and I had my car every time I like leave my house I like check my pocket to see if I have my car keys in it right, it's like yeah. every time I see an enemy creep wave I'm like oh they're supposed to be my creep wave here too mm -hmm. so I have to check for it real quick where is it where did I put my keys you know where did I put the creep wave <laughs> like where'd that thing yeah, go yeah. So it's like, oh, I see it getting pulled. Oh, I see it getting dragged. Oh, I see it, whatever. And right. it should be an automatic trigger. And for me, it's usually before the creep wave. It'll usually be at like, say the creep waves are supposed to meet at like 5.15. I'll look at like 5.08 to see what's going on with the creep wave. Um, yeah. That's like where you want to get to. 
but I'm just telling right. you like that's the goal. If you you know, I don't expect you to be able to do that soon per se, but like you know, you know, mm-hmm. work towards that. Um, right. But okay, now that you're, if you acknowledge your creep is gone right now, what what should you do here? Uh, drag these creeps into the hard camp and then cool. Okay, yeah. That's just like 160 gold down the tube. Yeah. Or 120, Ooh. whatever it is. This tower is under attack. Help around here. Has been killed. I'm a big fan of treads on Red and Monkey King unless you absolutely need phase. I, I feel like if you feel more comfortable going phase, maybe it's good for you, but treads just feel so fucking nice for this hero. Yeah. It's like better for farming and like notice how you're kind of just standing your ground most of the lane. Right. Um and if you need to chase people, it's usually with your E or W E I guess. Like most of the time you're running after people, it's not on the ground. You know, you're jumping from tree to tree. Yeah. The phase for me is only if it's like against a Slardar or something where if he like sprints at me and I don't want to jump to a tree every time he does that, I want to like phase boot to walk away a bit. That's yeah. kind of how I look at it. So I've been largely leaning against Battle Fury on Monkey King just because Maelstrom does so much more damage with your ultimate. But yeah. Uh, your MMR, honestly, I don't really hate Battle Fury. It's kinda... Yeah. I've kind of been leaning the same way too. Like yeah. every time, like the last few Battle Fury games I've gone, I've kind of realized I wanted a Maelstrom instead. Yeah, just because okay. of the timing. So, yeah, it's interesting that you came to that conclusion. So I think. What you're mis you're misunderstanding about Monkey King? Ah, uh, how do I word this? This actually isn't Monkey King specific. <laughs> God, it's actually funny how much Dota it seems so obvious to me, but it's only because I've like learned this shit. Yeah. Um, how would you define Brew as an offlaner? Uh, when he hits six, everyone dies. That plays against him pretty much. <laughs> And otherwise, okay, 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 okay. Yeah. Let's ask it differently, actually. I'm, I'm going to rework your brain, hopefully, a bit here. Okay. So, when you played against Razor, what guided your decision-making at, like, six, seven minutes into the game? Like, when Razor's, like, level six or seven, what, what like, what does that hero do to you? How does it affect you, etc.? Uh, against Razor, I'm basically concerned about Static Link and, like, where he is relative to the creep wave. And is he, like, killing you? Um, as long as I don't, like, run right next to him and, like, ignore like ignore Static Link, then probably not, no. Okay, so what is Razor to you in that situation? He's, he's kind of like an obstacle in the lane, I guess. He's an obstacle for your farm, yeah. he's an, an I call it an annoyance, but I think, you know, obstacle fits the same. Like, that. that that's a satisfactory description to me. So, mm-hmm. um, so when it comes to assessing how to play against Razor, you kind of gave it to me, but, uh, like, how would you assess, like, from the 7 to 10 minute mark, what's the criteria for when you lane or not or shit? Stuff like that. Doesn't matter Um, what carry you are, like I'm saying in general. Yeah, just based on, like, do I have the ability to clear the creeps that he's next to and then leave, or if I have support help or something to kill Okay, okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. So when you're against Brew... What cri- what's the criteria that determines whether or not you lane? Uh, I guess if I have support help, because otherwise it's going to kill me with split. Does a support prevent him from killing you with split? Actually, no. So <laughs> what all. is the criteria for laning against Brew when he's level 6? Uh, if he's not in the lane, I guess. Does my I... hero die to split? Yeah, yeah. That's literally it. So, yeah. what heroes in the game are considered counters to Brewmaster? Heroes that don't die to split. Oh my god, that's yeah. fucking crazy! <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would have never considered that. So, can you name a few? Mm. Uh, there's, there's two. There, there are two carries that instantly come to mind. 
Uh, if you're saying two carries, then I would guess Jug Lifestealer because they have BKB. Okay, so Jug is one of the hardest counters. Lifestealer is fine, but I, I'd put him like third or fourth. Anybody else? Like, what does Bruce Split primarily do? Um, is it a lot of stun control? Yeah, it's a lot of control. And then is it like stunning you though? Like, what is it? What does the death from a brewmaster look like? Um, you get stunned by Earth Spirit, the fire. Let's panda, watch like... this back, okay? Let's watch okay. this back. Yeah. What is killing you here, please? The s the slows and then the okay, the slows. Thank you. All you have to do is literally watch it back. So what is another hero that might be good? Because it doesn't get slowed. Um. Doesn't get slowed. Uh. Oh, Weaver. Okay. That makes a lot of sense, actually. The Maybe hardest lane counters to yeah. Brewmaster are Jug Weaver, man. Like, that's, yeah. that's just assessing lane matchups, guys. Like, that's yeah. all it is. But all it takes is to understand, like, okay, so lane matchups occur at, like, level 1 and 2, right? But they also occur at this 6 to 7 minute window-ish where both heroes hit 6. And, uh, like, every off laner has some sort of criteria. Most of them are, like, do they kill you with your ult, right? Right. So against, yeah. like, Doom, he pretty much kills everybody. But yeah. depending on what hero you are, maybe you can still push out the lane. Maybe you're like a Wraith King or a Terra Blade, or you're a hero like Ursa that can potentially threaten the Doom. So if you have some help, you know, you don't have to necessarily leave lane. Right. But the point is, if you are statically laning against an ultimate-based offlaner at 11 minutes, what does that say about you? <laughs> it says I'm <laughs> just not lane. thinking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like the, the funny thing is, I was watching this replay, and I was thinking to myself, "Is when is he gonna die?" I'm literally asking myself, I'm "Like, yeah. like, I'm just, I'm like waiting for the brew to just finally kill you. Like, that's what yeah. I'm just waiting for. I'm like, yeah. I, I don't, I don't get to talk about this until it happens, right? Like, I don't right. have to wait till it happens. But uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm just laughing because I'm like looking at you against an ultimate based offlaner that kills with slows. Your hero dies to slows, and you're just waiting against him. This is like a misconception people have when they play like these monkey kings and ursas." They feel like fucking raid bosses, but if that guy's ultimate kills you, then you can't lane against them. Yeah. Like, you actually just can't, you just can't right. lane against them anymore. And so it's yeah. like, for me, I, what I usually hope for is that guy, like, Bruce splits my support or some shit, and then I just walk back to lane and feel amazing because he doesn't have Bruce split anymore. Right, um, yeah. But yeah, it's funny that you would say he has a lot of control and stuns, and then you watch it back and you say you died to... You just got ran at and slowed for 10 yeah, seconds. Yeah. That's all that just happened here. So... Like, heroes like Slark and shit are okay, right? But ideally, it's heroes that are either Magic Immune or Weaver. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Those aren't, like, the only heroes you can pick against Brew, but every other hero, for the most part, I'm dipping when he gets six. Like, I'm out of here. Like, that's... The thing about Slark is I can walk up Dark Pack the Wave and just walk away. You know, that's the nice thing about that. Um, but heroes like PL are super hard to play into Brew for the same reason. Like, Brew is good against them, too, because you can dive PLs with your split. So yeah. it's like, no, I wouldn't usually pick PL into Brew. Uh, okay, so... <sighs> that portion of the game is really misunderstood, I think, by a large portion of the Dota community. Okay. So, it's not the end of the world. One unnecessary death. Got our decent time battle theory. I still think in lane, if you watch this game back, since it's the same context, you casually lane against him a lot when you could have fit random jungle camps in the middle. Yeah. Um, you, you're like kind of rinse and repeating the same thing over and over when it comes to the creep wave. It's like creep waves right here. We static it. We farm it. We wait for the next one. We farm it. Like that's what you did for like the Slark game as well as this Monkey King game. I need you to realize that's like some low skill fucking shit and you can't do that over and over again. You need to right. dynamically adjust to like where you can enter the lane. Like that needs to be a conscious thought for you. It needs to be like, oh, I can jungle this camp and then come back to the lane, maybe a tad late. Or right. I can push the lane out really quick and then go jungle a camp. You know, you don't just have to keep waiting for the camp to come back or like the wave to come back to you. Guess what happens yeah. if you keep doing that? 
Eventually, I'm going to die. Eventually, you're going to die, or you're just inefficient. One of the two. Yeah. kind of depends. Yeah. Against heroes like Razor, you're inefficient. Against heroes like Brew, you're going to die. You know? Right. So, the thing is, is that your movement there is just incredibly predictable. Like, it's it's just very predictable. So, yeah. um, if they ever have Kill Threat under you, if I'm like, or over you, if I'm like, if I'm like this Brew, I'm just going to wait for you to show up one more time, and then I'm going to kill you. You know? I was like, yeah. well, he'll come back, you know? Um, that, I got flamed for that. I got flamed for like kind of playing through the motions over and over again. And people just told me I was like predictable and shit. And yeah. uh, it's the same idea. So, okay. You just need a condition for what, where, when in the lane, where in the lane that you think you can return. And then time all of your jungle camp rotations around it, all that kind of shit. Um, being a little too active, I think, with Battle Fear here. I'm not going to comment yeah. too much on that. So. Okay, you TP top and then make your way mid. Okay, seems reasonable. Okay. Hmm, that was pretty ballsy, but this is making me nervous. Okay. I've got to ask. So. <laughs> is this reasonable that you're here? Why or why not? Um, well, they're showing three heroes on the map right now. The only hero missing is Brew. The problem is that Brew can kill me. So. Okay, no, so if Brew's missing, like, could if you see him here, is, unless he has a blink, could you just, like, jump away? Mm, yeah, I suppose so. Okay, sure. So at this juncture, based on what you see on the map, like, where is Brew more, like, let's just give, like, a heat map probability chart here. Where is yeah. he probably? Probably bottom, because the okay. fight's, like, bottom so okay so there's one hero top and three bottom and we see a large portion of the top half of the map mm -hmm. and we see none of the bottom half what would quakefa say to you right now uh, i should invade their triangle in front of those camps yeah you yeah. need to go top my friend every yeah. time you farm the mid lane you need to actively think rather than just defaulting to one side or the other because like the default would be their jungle like going down that would be the default yeah you just look at the map be like hmm what makes more sense here vision one hero top no vision three heroes bottom hmm yeah <laughs> objectively speaking it's pretty fucking obvious when right, you think about yeah. the criteria for where you would go a lot of times you farm away from fights like that's just how it is like if there's a yeah. fight going on bottom You'll usually farm yourself away from it. That's like 80 to 90% of the time, okay? Yeah. Uh, especially if you're like some Battle Fury carry. You know, you, you're not exactly intending to force yourself to fight, right? If you're a hero like Slark that's picking up his defusal, then maybe you're going to farm your way towards that fight, you know? Right. Um, but that's, uh, you know, that's different. So, uh, in this case, uh, Koik would be flamey. You know, he'd say like, hey, you know, BSJ. Got a camp right here. Got a camp right here. <laughs> here. 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 here yeah. And here. There's three heroes here. Vision here. You got yeah. 54 seconds to clear. That. Right. That. <laughs> that. 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 And that. And you go here. Yeah. And you're like fucking scanning because you're scared of where they are. Yeah. Dude, you know what I mean? Like, just think about it. Like, that's what Quake yeah. was saying. When I talked about his perspective on the game, like changing my perspective, his excitement for having safe jungle camps to hit was like yeah. wow now that you think about it, it 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 is like very comforting to like look at this mini map here and be like damn all of this right here is perfectly yeah. safe for the next 50 seconds like dude yeah. that's nice that's fucking <laughs> nice you know like that that is that's something we should appreciate as carry players so right, yeah. whenever you're in the mid lane just like when it comes to the criteria for um whether or not you return to lane as a carry you need to think about the same thing, whether or not you go top or bottom here. Yeah. You don't need to default to your triangle. Let's not be 3k anymore. Let's let's think a little bit more about our map movements. And now you're yeah. just stuck farming with your team. And now if there's a fight that breaks out, you're going to be stuck at it. Because you're like stuck bottom with your team. And now you die mid. Okay. Yeah. The thing is, I need you to treat... Okay. There's two crucial factors that go into this. Okay. 
when you're a defusal, like, okay, you need to know whether or not you're looking for a fight. Right. That's like the first step. Am I looking to confront opponent heroes? Uh, That's really all there's to it. Yeah, yeah. At every game you're playing, at this stage, 15 to 25 minutes, okay, you need to ask yourself, am I looking to confront opponent heroes? Right. If so, who am I looking to confront? Okay, like, meaning if you have a really good core-to-core -core matchup or something, you know, put yourself in front of that guy or some shit. Right. Um, but the point is, if you look at the map, the way it's played out for the last, like, minute and a half, the enemy team's been bottom for, like, the entire time. Yeah. So if you're going to farm mid, like, what angle should you be coming from? I guess from the, like, from top side. Yeah, you should be coming from right here. Because yeah. they're all down here. So if you're, if you're looking to confront them, by all means, like, just walk up to this creep wave, right? But, yeah. like, what I want you to view this creep wave as is an obligation and a responsibility. Mm -hmm. And what's the responsibility? Like, what does this creep wave mean to you? Why does it need to be pushed? Um, gets us vision. And, like, it so if you don't push this creep wave, what does that mean to you? Um, it's going to push into us, and they're free to kind of... Like, so if this way. lane is up here, what does that mean to you? Um, it means they could be, like, anywhere. They, they could be on our side of the river. Do you feel safe here now? No. So what this mid wave right here means? It's that I get to farm these fucking creeps, bro. That's what that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay? So I walk up, I probably stun this creep wave... And get the fuck out, dude. Don't die in the river, guys. Please. Please. Yeah. Don't die in the river. This is like dead zone. Like walking right into this. Is like the most dangerous point of the map is this square. Right. Right here. Because that's where creeps are and your vision is literally nothing. Like you can't see past here and you can't see past here. There's like yeah. literally five gank paths on you <laughs> that are all like without like outside of 200 range. You know what I mean? Right. That's like holy yeah. shit. <laughs> Uh, this, this right here is like the death square on the map. So, um, yeah. So what you, like you told me, it gives you information, it gives you vision, forces a response. There's so many benefits to pushing this wave. So as a carry, when it comes to not being quote unquote AFK, this is the kind of shit that makes you not an AFK carry. But yeah. you need to realize that this shit is dangerous, that the mid wave is an objective, right. that this shit is important. But it is not about the farm. It is about pushing the wave. Right. So with whatever hero you are, if I'm PL, I'm doppling and lancing it and walking away. If yeah. I'm Slark, I probably don't walk up to this because I'm against Faces Void. If I'm Monkey yeah. King, I'm stunning it from a distance. You know, that kind of shit, okay? So mm -hmm. this is a lot of stuff for you. All of its different stages of the game. But... yeah. Um, it's you kind of just doing the same thing over and over again, and sometimes the opponent just happens to be there and kill you. Right. So it's like you yeah. not consciously assessing the risk of the fact, like, you walking up and pushing that wave is enough for me to know if I watch somebody playing that they don't understand how important the mid wave is. Right. Because if you understand that that's an important objective, you'll understand that the opponent's probably somebody somewhere near it a majority of the game. Right, right? yeah. So if somebody's near it the majority of the game, you're not going to fucking walk up to it. Like, that's not what you're going to yeah, do. Yeah. Um, okay, so sense. you... Let's see here. I don't know if I sh I don't think I commit more to that fight, right? Like, no, no, I think everything here is fine. Everything you're yeah. doing here is fine. You were, like, pushing that lane and your team was fighting and you assessed and didn't go. That's fine. Okay, so we see a fight going on bottom. We have eggs. 24-30. And quickly push out the mid wave. This is fight. I wish you'd be looking at this fight. That might actually be a fight you could have shown up to, but I don't actually know. Yeah. I understand you wanted to go for the bounties. So if there's a fight that happens like that... Okay, top tower died. You know what? I don't hate anything you did here. I just wish you had looked at the fight. I think you could have shown up yeah. to it, but I don't know. For the record, guys, when you're watching your own replays, the first step is to know whether or not you gave yourself the proper information to give yourself a decision. If you yeah. guys didn't look at the fight, please don't go back through your own replay, watch the fight, and figure out if you should have gone to it. You need to first look at the fucking fight. 
Right. So yeah. for you, like the correction for you is that any fight that you are close enough to show up to, you need to look at it. Like that's right. literally the first step. If that's not being done, the any step further than that is not fixable. You know, like it's gotcha. not it's yeah. not accessible. So um, it really is as simple as that for you guys. It is hard to farm efficiently, constantly move your camera around the map. If there's a fight going on, to actually check it and then assess it very quickly. It's yeah. actually hard. That's a very hard skill. But the first step of that skill is to assess every fight that's near you, right? Like that is the first step. So yeah, uh, yeah that that there is. That's why for you, if in case you were wondering, and anyone watching, I don't even want to look at that fight. I don't know. I really don't know if he could have shown up to it. And it's not right, fair yeah. to like go through the fight with him and see. It doesn't help him at all. So okay. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Okay. Nice. Not bad. Okay. Even got an ancient stack off. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you finish this ancient camp. What do you think I would be thinking right now? Roche. I guess. Maybe. Or... But like. What's the most important thing almost every time the opponent's dead? Fixing lanes. Okay. So you finished the ancient camp. Now what? Look at the timer. Why was I okay with you staying here until right now? Um, because the the mid wave hasn't met yet, or the top wave hasn't met yet. Yeah, yeah for where the top wave is, yeah. Gonna jump to here. <laughs> And then come back for this, my friend. Yeah. Because if you do that, you do this, then this, then this, mm -hmm. then this, then this, 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 and then they're all alive. Yeah. You'll kill this creep wave at 47. Right. Right? And at that point, you killed it, they just respawn, you got out, you're good. Right? Mm -hmm. Point yeah. is that I was actually okay with you farming these ancients, because the creep wave near you that you were supposed to cut... Was still here, right? And I was just waiting to see if that was coincidence or you actually were doing that. So, gotcha. yeah, if you want to farm these ancients, if the create say these ancients took you four extra seconds to kill than just now, you were supposed to have jumped to this creep wave and then jump back. Gotcha. You see what yeah. I'm saying? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's all based on whether or not you could clear these creeps before you. Like, if you could kill this before you killed these, basically. Right, yeah. But you are now going to lose map control because you just backed off and jumped into your own jungle here. Yeah. You are playing your own side when you could be playing theirs. So you do end up going mid. Okay, so it's not horrible. I don't hate this. That was close. Like, overall, you stayed on their map pretty well, actually. It wasn't perfect, but the fact that you went back to mid rather than, like, farming these camps is really good. There's, like, no surprise to me that by going back mid, that led to good things happening. Played aggressively on the map when they uh, were dead. Always does that. Okay. That was good. You have BKB. Okay, I've got to... I've got to... Maybe a little bit... Maybe I'm leaking strats here. I'm not even kidding. Okay, here we go. I don't care. So, here we go. Right now. So, when they're dead, my friend, I'm not even going to lie. If somebody's in sit chat and they're 6k or 7k, they're going to learn from this. So, you killed them. Yes. Why are we setting lanes up? To prep for Roche, I, I suppose. Or Try again. It's close, but try again. Um, basically, when they respawn, we can kill them again like if they we can they fight them again. onto the lanes yeah yeah we can fight advantageously again yeah. what is your like when are you willing to fight um basically like whenever i have bkb but i don't have ult so i guess i'm waiting for my ult so when are you willing to fight, fight? um when they respawn pretty much because i've brew respawned in 16 and i, I get my ult in 16. okay so let's look yeah. at the timer Let's, let's, let's act like you haven't played this game before. Meaning, like, right. this, this specific game right here. Right. Let's look at the timer. Your ult's up at 16. 
what's the next objective you can fight for? Uh, either Roche or... Well, yeah, I, I would assume Roche. I Your guess. ult is up at 29.45. What is yep. the next objective you oh, can fight for? Uh, bounty runes. Okay, so where's the fight going to occur? Probably in their triangle or... Okay, the top boom, the right there. It's going to occur on their bounty rune. You can predict that 100 times out of 100. 100 times yep. out of 100, no question. The next fight right here will occur at 30 minutes at the bounties. Why? Because yeah. that is an objective that matters to the opponent. Period. Right. It's that simple. How do you like know that's where the next fight's going to be? It matters to the opponent. If the fight doesn't happen there, it's you picking up the bounty rune and walking away, and they get quad bountied. Like, right. those are the two permutations of this situation. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you clear this creep wave. While they're dead, what should you do right now? Um, I guess play, play in their triangle to, like, set up. Holy for, shit, you <laughs> set up for the... Oh my yeah, god, yeah. that's crazy. <laughs> yeah. This is something that I can't even get my 8k teammates in North America to do, man. Okay? Yeah. So, the next fight's obviously gonna occur here. So, nothing matters right now more than playing to objectives, like, 25 minutes plus. Okay? Like, 25 right. minutes plus, we're done trying to get 1,000 GPM. Yeah. Every move we make is about strategically placing ourselves on the map, Okay. So yeah. every time you take a fight, every time you finish a tower, every time you push a creep wave, every time you kill a Roche, you need to consider what your next objective is. Whatever it is. It can be small. Bounty runes. Like, uh, they're not small necessarily, but they, they are an objective that everyone yeah. in the game is considering. Like, this Hoodwink, when he respawns, he's definitely thinking, it's like, oh, I can go pick up Bounty Rune or some shit, or I'm going to go farm Triangle, you know? Like, they're thinking something yeah. along those lines. Right. So... Rather than anything that you could do in this fucking game, you need to sit on their triangle, d tell your team to de-ward it, and sit on trees. If they walk up the fucking high ground, you ult them and stun them inside of your ult. Yeah, yeah. Like, there, there's no other way this should get played. Like, right. so for you, I'm actually not upset with you, because I don't expect, like, 7k players to do this shit, because they just don't get it, for whatever fucking yeah. reason. But it is so easily predictable, if you think about it, right? Yeah. So when you get these kills really important to start thinking about your next objective yeah. we can lay it out for you if you consciously try to guess what the next objective is your plays will be so much cleaner so the mm -hmm. next step to this since you're in a pub is that right now based on the vision situation do you feel good about fighting at their triangle not really we don't have so the greatest vision. you need to think okay the next fight's gonna be here i want to set up on it I need these things to occur prior yeah. to 30 minutes to feel good here. That's right. like the description. I, this is the way I think about it to myself. If your team is three people bottom, what does that mean to you? We're not fighting here. You're just backing the fuck off and you're taking this bounty run, okay? Yeah. That, like, whether or not you're, like, do we get pissed at our teammates? <sighs> I mean, they're just... They're you just may be frustrated, gonna... but yeah. we don't bitch at them. We don't say, like, you guys fucking suck. Play around objectives, but what you do is you say, hey guys, like we can fight a triangle, let's like let's D ward. And if they mm -hmm. don't do it, then you accept that you're not fighting there and you back off. But all that stems from thinking what the next objective is and all that shit. I can't tell you the percentage of carries lower than 8,000 MOR, I'm mm -hmm. meaning like rank 200 in A, will be in this situation and they will go straight here. And it yeah. pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. I don't get to talk about this shit very much, guys. Yeah. But if you guys can hear me now that I'm assessing the situation in depth, by going here, you're fucking running the map, guys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sit here, farm this, put a ward, sit on it. They're going to walk up into you through here and get wiped. Like, yeah. that's what they're going to fucking do, and the game's over. The game's literally over. Like, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. You guys kill them right yeah, there, yeah. you take Roche, you go high ground, game yeah. over. How many times is this creep camp going to win you the game? Ne like never <laughs> literally never yeah if there are any 7 to 8k carry players in NA watching this please for the love of god please watch yeah <laughs> I, I can't handle it yeah okay. it's funny because when Mars was calling for it and, he, and then like the skyward went, or the uh, skyref went bottom and then we were just I think we ended up taking the fight anyways but we it's already too late knew, for you to uh, fight here if you farm that big camp yeah. by the way it's actually yeah, too late too. it's already yeah. too late so the fight ends up going about even, but this didn't look like a tactical advantage of a fight for you guys. Do you see what I'm right. saying? 
Like, you didn't have vision until it was daytime. You jumped into them after they initiated onto your team, right? Yeah. Your Skyrath isn't here. Like, even though it was the fight that I think should happen, it wasn't done correctly, right? right. So, yeah. that's how I look at that fight. Okay. Yeah, that's shit I don't expect you to know, but I think it, maybe sometimes it'll win you again. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so you get Roche. Okay, lost ages. Okay. Not the end of the world. No BKB. Void died, though. Oh, no, not this. Okay. Good dodge there. I can't even believe you considered that. Wait, what are we doing? We have no BKB, no ultimate. Okay, we have BKB again. No Aegis. Okay. That TB is kind of a grief. Okay. I just need you to know anytime you do that TB that you're completely surrendering control of the triangle. So, yeah. if you think that's okay because you want to get tier 2 bottom and then play here, that's fine. Okay. But, like, if you aren't aware of that, then please be aware of that now. Yeah, I think that that situation, like regardless of what lane it is, like always confounds me because I see, I see their wave at my tier two. And I know that tower isn't like, like a super important objective, but I no one else is pushing it out, so I don't know if I should just continue to play the triangle and like. Usually, like usually when it really tricks me is like there's a nature's prophet pushing that tower or something like that, and I have to decide between like surrendering area control or, or like. Deep pushing the wave or whatever. Okay. Um, that's okay, usually okay. Like a hard call to make. So I'm gonna let you and everyone else know right now Total that this speed. this session is gonna go on YouTube. I think I've talked about way too many things that I get asked about. Um, mm -hmm. I'll probably reference this session a lot, um, yep. because the stuff in your start game happens a lot, and mm -hmm. then these macro decisions later on in the game. Um, I get asked about like late game decision making. I would consider like 35 minutes to be late game. Most of my games yeah. end at like 35, 40 minutes. So, okay. So, last time I did a video like this, it was in a session, I think, with Ari, and I just asked him his perspective on the situation. So, you just told me, seems like a pretty common scenario we'll find ourselves in, that yeah. you're controlling their triangle, it can be Radiant or Dire, it doesn't really matter, and you are stuck with a situation where you are not sure whether or not you're supposed to sit here, or whether or not you're supposed to go bottom. So, just, just, you know, you're gonna, you're laying in bed at night. You're losing some sleep. You just lost a Monkey King game at sixty minutes, and yeah. you're thinking to yourself about this moment at thirty four fifty six where you could have gone bottom or you could have stayed in your triangle. What's like racing through your head as you think about this to yourself? Um, I guess, I mean. In general, about this game, I was just kind of like, I felt like we definitely threw away the opportunity to like put the game away because the void was super behind and like really all they had going for them was the brew. Like at this point in the game, and I think we took a couple bad fights in the tr in their triangle because like the fights we took just were a little bit not good enough, I guess. Okay, so let's. I understand, but let's make sure we focus on this exact moment because that okay. you know you're losing sleep at night. You're yeah. in your bed, you've thought about 3456, and you decided, mm -hmm. I, you know, do I go bottom or do I stay in their triangle? Mm -hmm. Like, what are some positives and negatives of staying in their triangle? Um, the positives are that they either can't walk up in here, if they do, we kill them. Um, mm -hmm. They're denied Ancient Farm, as well, like, as well as the other two camps. Um, it generally also forces them to play away from Roche, because we're on Dire. Um, okay. And they... They kind of, if they have to stay in their base, eventually we should be able to get enough items that Void Chrono and Brew Split is something that we can work around in fights. Okay. Um, yeah. That's what are what are the negatives, sir? Oh, sorry. Yeah, the negatives of being here versus like TPing bottom, um, or that we could potentially lose that tower bottom, and they could set up on that part of the map. I guess. Okay. Um, Anything else? And other than that, probably not. I I can't think of anything else. Okay. 
So, I need you to look at the map. Okay. This is hilarious. How blind we are to the situation when it's so fucking obvious. What do you think is the best way to know what to do here? I'm actually curious. Like, what's like the number one resource or perspective that you could take on this situation yeah. to guide you? I'm actually curious. Uh, looking at where the creep waves are? Eh, okay, that's decent. It's decent. Anything else? Um, where our vision is? What do you think I'm getting at here? Oh, where they where they are? What they know, what they see, and what their <laughs> options are. So, right now, you're a faces void. You just respawned. You've got Chrono. <laughs> this is what the map looks like. Where's the opponent? Probably in the faces void's triangle. Okay. And if they're there, what does that mean to you? Um, your faces void. If we can get a good chrono, then we could potentially kill, but it is dangerous because there's Mars Arena, and I don't even think you have Okay, so you're walking up a high ground based on the fact that you have no vision. What are they? Yeah, okay, yeah. you have no vision. They probably have vision there. They're sitting on top of that high ground for you. What are your choices? Yeah. Um, I guess smoke in there, or... Okay, and if you're sitting on high or... grounds, what do they do? If they smoke into you? Um, like, if you if they smoke... If, if, they, if he smokes and his smoke breaks right here, what does that mean to him? Uh... <laughs> It means is he's he blind gonna... time walking up that fucking hill and or is he gonna probably. die to a sheep stick fucking sky yeah, up he's and probably, die? He's probably dying. Okay. So what are their options? Um to farm the bottom half of the map, I okay. guess, or otherwise stay in the base. Stay in the base, farm the other side of the map, maybe do like some ridiculous smoke where they do like this. I actually yeah. did an analysis of a DPC game in my like Weatherman segment where it happened this way. Mm -hmm. Where one team smoked like uh, it was dire situation where they were yeah. trapped and they smoked like this and took yeah. this area and then the radiant smoked like this <laughs> <laughs> and like tried to wrap on them and it ended up with the radiant sitting here and the dire sitting here. <laughs> this is actually pretty funny. Um, yeah. I did a segment on that, but my point being is if you stay in the triangle, okay, mm -hmm. as a void and anyone else on the radiant, this is what I got. This camp. This camp, this camp, and by the time I get here, this wave's already pushing in, and I might be fearful of coming back to base, right? Right. Is anyone on this team going to walk down here? Mm, no. Okay. So, if I see a Monkey King TP from here to here, what do I do? Uh, immediately run into the triangle, because you know the monkey okay. king's not there. So, yeah. what is the better option? To stay in the triangle. Wow! <laughs> wow! That's crazy. That, that is so obvious at that point. And <laughs> yeah, they're like 80% of my carries in my fucking games, TP bottom. <laughs> oh my yeah. god, it's fucking PTSD, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this TP's garbage. Okay. The point is, is that you're getting three creep waves here. Okay? <laughs> your team is gonna farm about the same amount other than your three creep waves compared to you guys sitting on the triangle, cutting two creep waves and farming the triangle, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. This, you're going to net, like, three more creep waves. The opponent gets out of their base, nets a triangle, and is going to be able to potentially have high ground to maneuver the map. Yeah. Is your 600 gold worth that? No, it's not. No! Guys, rank <laughs> 250 carry players of North America... <laughs> The fact that they left your ward there is hilariously bad, but, you know, that's yeah. nice of them. If they're the support there, by the way, if you see the enemy carry TP bottom and you're a Radiant support and you guys are watching this and you're wondering what to do, you need to fucking instant deward that triangle and scam it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's what they should have done. Okay. I guarantee you, 
when you're up by 10k mm -hmm. and you say to your team guys we are gonna sit in this fucking triangle cutting two creep waves for 10 minutes straight until this next rush comes up you will win 100 yeah. percent of those games okay 95 mm -hmm. percent of those games okay right so what happens is when you sit in this triangle the opponent has two choices like you said they're gonna sit in their fucking base holding their dicks or they're going to try to, like, walk out bottom. So if you know that they've walked out bottom, like you see a guy here, right? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you can tell based on the map that there's maybe one or two guys down here. And yeah. you guys are just still sitting up here. You've just been cutting the creep waves, farming the triangle. What is your course of action that would make sense to you there? Um, if, if there's someone that is walking out on their side of the map, then we could either look to like basically we would probably go out i guess it would depend on how good their high ground defense is but we'd probably make sure the waves are pushed in and then like threaten the tower so he has to come back or you have two I, options yeah that's one of them or i guess some of us could smoke and kill him depending on wow how, yeah you know what's amazing is if you just fucking control this area you keep doing it and then you have two obvious choices when they leave base if they don't leave base you just mm -hmm. keep doing it right like yeah. Nothing changes. You're happy with this. If they leave base, you either threaten their base and make them come back, mm -hmm. or you go kill them with a the smoke. Yeah. That's the two choices. That's it. And it it's always going to work. It's always going to fucking work. Because what happens is, you do this, and they try to go out on the bottom half of the map. You're the you're the sheep dog, and they're the sheep, and you say, get back in your fucking fence. And then you yeah. put them back in the fence, and then where do you go after that? Yeah. Where do you go after uh, that? After that, we go back to where we... You go right back to the fucking triangle. triangle. <laughs> yeah. And you're ready yeah. to repeat this until Roche is alive again. Yeah. Or the enemy team's given up because they've lost so much fucking gold. Why do you think right. professional matches at 30 minutes into the game when one team has like an 8k lead last another 15 minutes, they have a 30k lead and the game's suddenly over? And you're just like, well, that was boring. Well, this is how yeah. you win. That's right. what they, well, these guys. That's what they do. Like yeah. every fucking game. <laughs> every fucking yeah. game. And when they're radiant, they're usually sitting up here. You know, because yeah. Rose is right here. That's Rose protection, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, you know, it's, it's literally the same fucking thing every game. It's, yeah. it's hilarious how you can, you know, watch so many pro matches or if anyone's like a Dota fan and they watch professional games, mm -hmm. they, that, that they could see so many games where this is happening and yet they don't see it. It's not like, it's not your fault. I didn't see it either. Right. It's so mm -hmm. much easier when somebody just describes to you exactly what's going on and why. But like, yeah. you know, it's just funny. I'm only taking, I'm only, you know, you're getting a literal, like, I would be telling a fucking tier three NA team this shit, okay? So, yeah. I'm not trying to say you're lucky or whatever, but <laughs> not, this is above your pay grade for 3K, but it'll win you yeah. games, man. Oh, for sure. So, yeah. if you, if I can get a pub where you guys are solo queue, like you're solo queue, or some of my mm -hmm. viewers are solo queue, and five of you guys on the same team watched this fucking coaching session, and you guys yeah. sit on this fucking hill, and they watch <laughs> you, and you in the game please send me that clip guys for the all love right. of god please just say bsj all of us knew about this that yeah. is my dream because at the end of the day this probably won't work if you have one idiot that tv's bottom okay like it's not gonna work yeah so yeah. if you can manage to convince your team to sit on the high ground mm -hmm. then great so i want you to notice okay that Every move you guys ended up making after your UTP bottom, do you know what you ended up trying to do with your moves? Like after trying that? To get back, trying to get back into their triangle pretty much. <laughs> just trying to go yeah. back into the triangle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. well, I just TP bottom and had to make myself do the objective thing all over again. You yeah. know, like that's what I, so yeah. Um, yeah. That's the funny part is if you guys actually find yourself, you're like, hmm, I actually be nice to take over their triangle right now <laughs> but it's like yeah you literally just tp it away from it <laughs> you know? right yeah um so yeah this is uh this is hyper late game decision making in dota uh mm -hmm. this applies pretty much for the rest of the game um you know for yeah 30 minutes plus uh it's kind of funny how this works out but the fact that you guys lose this game i guess you said we do yeah yeah i mean that's just a situation where every time you guys don't stick to that, you're you're just potentially losing the game. This right. camp pretty much should never get farmed. Mm -hmm. This is like, they're dead, we have nothing else to do, farm it. I don't even always have the discipline to not farm that camp. Yeah. Man, when you have Battle Fury Ags, I understand. You want to go hit some fucking creeps. Yeah. This is all just a potential yeah. throw. Every single second you're back here, 
and your team is up there. It's just a potential throw, my man. This is all throwing. All of this. Well, now that your team's dead, it's not anymore. You know, you can do whatever you want. Right, yeah. But the before they were dead. Yeah. Yeah, and this happens. There's a few more fights where they just... Okay, like, guys. Last fights. note before we're about to wrap up this session. When you are right here, my friends. If this is what your guys' map looks like, there is no amount of creeps in your own jungle that are going to win you this game, guys. Yeah. At this stage in the game, those creeps are worth like three or 400 gold. Okay. We look at the fucking gold. That's like, like 0.2% of your net worth or some shit. I'm not even doing the math. I don't even want to do right. it. Okay. It's like a ridiculously small percentage of your net worth. Yeah. And yet, when you guys separate to go farm creeps... I think right when that happened, I, I knew I, I should have been there. Like, this goes for everybody. It's equally bad that you're back in the Skywrath Mage ran into their base going for a kill. Like, both those yeah. things are bad. So, like, if you guys are the support players, you know, it's equally bad that you try to make an aggressive play when you're... I guess he's a mid-sky or some shit. Yeah, he's um, mid-sky. You make an aggressive play when your carry's back. But please, yeah. guys... Can we end the era of the Dota 2 community? We're 39 minutes into the game. This is what the map looks like. And the carry does a quick lap through his own jungle. Can we end yes. this? For the love of God. End this. Yeah. This is the no-fly zone. The only time <laughs> this is a fly zone is when you got bots. You got a coddle. You're a nature's prophet. You're an ember with a remnant. Or yeah. some other shit that can show up to the fight instantly. Right. That is the only exception to this shit, guys. Because at this stage in the game, the only thing that fucking matters is the ability to be S5. Mm -hmm. Not that you have to always be right next to each other. But at any given moment, when somebody gets gone on, or a guy on the enemy team steps out of position, you're ready to pounce, you know? Yeah. You are ready with right. five heroes in that vicinity to fucking murder that guy or win the team fight. That is yeah. all that matters, guys. The amount of times you will win games because you are just waiting here for something good to happen yeah. will be infinitely more than doing this lap through your own jungle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys? I know it's hard, but my GPM BSJ. <laughs> no, guys. Please, no. So you've got like a good attitude. You know, I'm jokingly flaming you at the end of the yeah, day. Yeah. It's really hard to not do this. It is so hard, guys. Like, trust me. I know. I'm a carry player. I know. I know. I know. Uh, yeah. But please. I know when you're low over Mars, I told you the best way to win is to get high GPM and like have the most net worth. That's the first 20 minutes of the game, guys. Yeah. At this point, dude, you've already got six items. Right. Come on, bro. You know, yeah, you, 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 like that abyssal. Sure, it's nice, but like, like you're you, you know, like let's be, let's yeah, be happy, uh, let's be happy with that. So, right. at this stage, all that matters is not giving the opponent the play to win the game. Like that's all that fucking matters. That's really all yeah. it is. So, my um, yeah, I think that's about it for me. Do you have any final questions about anything? Um, no, I think I mean that definitely it, it covers it a lot for sure. I think like. Uh, the most like poignant thing you said, I think, was like the idea that we left the triangle and we're trying to fight back, like to get to where we were. Like to to me, that actually like says exactly like I, I felt I felt like us getting that tier two bottom was like us trying to get even more out of the map when we should have been content with like you know the seventy five percent or ninety. The thing is, this tier two doesn't you know? give you anything more right. of the map. Yeah. Like when you're here, you're not like attempting to control this anyway. Right. Right. So it's like a bit different if it's like this tier two and you're radiant because then like you can, can like walk up to here when you're trying to defend. Like it gives you more time to go kill Roche or something. Yeah. But like when you're radiant, like this tier two doesn't do a lot. You know, right. it's like when you're dire, this tier two doesn't really do that much either. Mm -hmm. um, the only difference is that like this tier two, at, like if you can get it at 20, 
or like 18 minutes or something, you know, you take the outpost and then you never have to be down here again. You know, like right. that's the cool part. It allows you to just play here and and be done with this area. But like yeah. if you've managed to invade the triangle prior to killing this tier two, that tier two literally means nothing. Like that, right. it means literally nothing. So yeah. um, it's like a tower that should eventually die because your creep wave, they don't want to go farm it and it just kills their, right. you yeah. know? And the only reason that you leave this triangle is because you leave as a group and you go murder the people that are like split pushing cutely down here you know yeah and it's like that's because you're doing this to win the farm battle and they have to step out of their base to contest you there right Right? like they have to start going down here they have to start like cutting this you know all that kind of shit it's Mm -hmm. like if you're against profit you can't just sit in this triangle controlling it you have to actually go murder that guy like you have to go kill him down here you know and that's a bit different things get complicated but that's honestly less often the case than it is where they just can't do anything about this yeah and so, um, yeah, like in these type of games where they just don't have a hero that can go down here, then you guys just sit here and you win the game. Like you guys will actually just win the game if all five of you are just somewhere in this area. There's just no way, unless you literally get, like you guys just didn't D-Ward and the Void sees you and five-man chronos you. Like chronos, yeah. if that Void has the audacity to like blind time walk up this hill and chrono instantly before he gets shaped yeah. and chrono all five of you, like kudos guess, to him. He yeah. probably deserved to win that fucking game. Okay, like yeah. that's that's how it is. Like if he can do yeah. that before he gets hexed or stunned by you, it's like you know, kudos, good job, right. man. Um, so yeah. yeah. Um, anything else you wanted to talk about? Um, I guess one other question. This is like the classic. You know, I know you were asking Koig for this, and it's like the same thing. But like, say I get into the scenario and like one teammate, like one teammate did what I did, and they just want to leave, or like they don't want to sit in the triangle, like. Is there a next best optimal place to be that isn't like if we can't hold the triangle because for whatever reason it's a pub, like teammates don't want to cooperate or like whatever the case may be, like is there another place we should be that's or like is there something else we should be doing or like how I know that's kind of like a hard topic because it's like it's basically retreat to the thing. next best high ground, my friend. Okay. So a lot of times for me that means I retreat to like right here mm. and I start playing this area. Usually you can hold this area with like three or four heroes. Yeah. So if I'm dire, I'll sit here instead of up here. Mm. Um, for me, it's a lot of experience. It's just however far up on the map I can play with the heroes that I have is how far I'm going to play up. So okay. like say my witch doctor TP here, sometimes I'll be like, yeah, fuck it. We can still defend this, you know? Right. Um, but if it's like my mid laner, a lot of times you just have to accept it. It's like I said, this is the goal for you. If you're one of your TP, if you're one of your teammates, that you know is required to be here for you to defend this, then you have to give it up. And guess what you get to spend the next five minutes doing? Trying to get back there. Trying to get it back. Why yeah. do you think I get so annoyed? Like, right. it's just boring. It's literally just boring to, like, know I need to take the triangle, take the triangle, have one of my teammates grief it, know, spend the next five minutes getting the triangle <laughs> back, and then do it yeah. all over again because it keeps happening. Like, it gets old. You know? It, yeah. it, it does get old. But it's, like, honestly, when you want to win games, that that's, like, you just have to do it. You know? You have to be like, well... I know we can't defend the triangle anymore, so yeah, let's just let them have it, and we'll back off. It's frustrating. It takes a lot of patience. Mm. It takes a lot of discipline, uh, but that's really all you can do. So yeah, uh, and there's no fancy answer there. Like, there's no better yeah. option. Like for you, right. you can just play as far up as you possibly think you can, and then look for an opportunity to tell your team, "Hey, guys, like, let's smoke back into their triangle or something." Yeah. So, okay. any final questions other than that? Uh, no, other than that, I'm all good. Awesome, man. Thanks for signing up. It was fun. Yeah, was thanks, Christian. You too. Bye. If you liked this video, please like, comment, subscribe to the YouTube channel, all that shenanigans, because at the end of the day, YouTube does care about that. You may not care about it. I may not care about it, but the YouTube algorithm does. So please do.